Okay, okay. I know Draw My Life videos were only a thing in like 2013, but I didn't have a personal channel in 2013, and I've always wanted to do one. And it seems like a few of you wanted me to do one too. So I'll see you on the other side. So as you probably know, I was born and raised in Kansas. My parents always told me that I was a crier and pretty mischievous. I have a little brother and an older sister. My sister was always super clean and organized. I would always take toilet paper and throw it all over the living room. Then my sister would come and put them into little clean piles for my mom because, you know, she was an angel. My brother was never scared to show off his talents. He would give us these talent shows where he would dance and sing Clay Aiken songs to us. Too bad I don't remember much of those times. But the first thing I can actually remember was having a girlfriend in preschool named Emily, the first girl out of many who have impacted my life. She and I were bestest of friends, and I remember I would always tell her that there would be a spider or a bee on her shoulder just to joke around. Then came a day when the bee really was on her, and when I told her she didn't believe me. So she got stung and cried and cried. Her mom decided from that day forward she wasn't allowed to hang out with me. From that, I learned it's better to be truthful. In school, I always loved learning new things, but I never really got good at them. I played basically every sport, but never wanted to be at the center of attention. I used to play soccer and would always pass the ball off as soon as I got it. One game, my dad took me off the field and told me I needed to stop being selfless and try to score more often. I cried because I thought giving the ball to my friends was a good thing. That was the end of my soccer career and on to my baseball career. I joined a pretty competitive baseball team in third grade where we would practice basically year round. Even when it was snowing, we'd rent out a warehouse to practice drills. Our coaches would even throw baseballs at us so that we wouldn't be scared of the ball. That didn't work because I still cried every time I went up to bat. All my coaches were big men who yelled a lot. We would be screamed at like a drill sergeant until we were perfect. At least that's how it seemed from the mind of a kid. But that taught me not to be intimidated by big scary men. Because if 10 year old Sam could stand up to them, I could always stand up to them. I quit baseball about midway through middle school, which was a great time in my life because I met a girl named Gabby, the second girl to really impact my life. She was my locker neighbor and I fell in love with this girl the day that I met her. We would talk every day and call each other really cute nicknames, but I never got the courage to tell her how I really felt about her. I was her locker neighbor and best friend for three years. Yes, three years and every day I pined away wanting to tell her how much she meant to me. In our first year of high school together, I finally got the courage to tell her and at that point, she shut me down. I then realized I wasted three years of my life trying to talk to one girl and never getting the answer because I was too scared. And I was scared. Right after that, I dated a girl named Olivia. Most of my friends even said she was the prettiest girl in school. <clears throat> no big deal. But I still couldn't talk to her. Yes, I know, she was my actual girlfriend, she said she liked me, and I still could not even talk to her. I only ever got the courage to see her outside of school twice, and then she broke up with me because I was too shy. This crushed me. I was so mad. I ran away that night and left my phone at home so my parents couldn't find me. I wasn't good enough, and I had zero confidence. That night was probably the lowest point in my life. But that next summer, I met a guy by the name of Colby Brock. I was at band camp on a water break sitting on the curbside alone. Colby was about 10 feet away from me on the same curb and we were both looking at this girl named Mary. He asked me if I liked her and I said yes but I could never talk to her, still feeling bad about the past two girls I liked. He told me he liked her too and that he used to go to the mall with his friend to try to talk to girls like her. I said that sounded like fun and that we should go do that so that we could build up the confidence to talk to Mary. And that was the beginning of a friendship that flipped my entire life around. That starts sophomore year of high school, the year everything changed. Colby and I went to the mall every single week to work on confidence and putting ourselves outside of our comfort zone. Within the next few weeks, I was able to start conversations with people I didn't know and I'd made a few new friends. I also joined the cross country team as well as the swim team that year. Because of those extra sports and the harder classes, that was the busiest I'd ever been in my entire life. Swim practice started at 5.30 a.m. and ended after school at 6.30 p.m. So between that and homework and then working on my personal skills on the weekends, I had approximately zero life. And as any high school kid does, I needed some money. So that next spring, my dad offered me the money to do certain labor jobs with him. My dad and I would go do landscaping work and fix up the house together and talk about everything I had learned. This was probably the first time I had serious bonding time with my father one-on-one, -on -one, so I will forever remember these days. And at that point, my dad also gave me a book called How to Win Friends and Influence People. This was a game changer. So we would work while talking about the book and about my life with girls. Soon after, and because my people skills were getting better, I met a girl. This story gets a little more personal, so I'm gonna call this girl Julia. Julia became my first girlfriend that I could actually talk to. <laughs> she was super sarcastic and funny, but she wasn't all that happy with her life. And I hung out with her about as much as I hung out with Colby, which is saying a lot. And she became the first girl I fell in love with. We would talk late at night about our problems and solve our troubles together. We spent a year together, and that was for once 
the happiest year of my life. At the end of the year, we broke up. It wasn't a bad breakup, we just had different interests. But Julia wrote me a letter. This letter, again, changed my life and is probably the most important thing I've ever read. A part of it said something like this. Dear Sam, ever since I was a kid, I wanted to end my life early. I have not been happy and I've never wanted to live past 17 years old. I have been planning this for years and I had every intention of ending my life on my 17th birthday. Until I met you, Sam. I have never met anyone who has helped me love myself the way you did. You spent my 17th birthday with me and when the time came that I was going to take my life, I thought of you. You saved my life, Sam. You made me want to live forever. And I will always love you for that. That was the most terrifying and amazing thing I've ever read. For the first time in my life, I have made a difference in someone else's life. And in fact, a pretty big difference. To this day, that is the best feeling I've ever experienced. Colby and I started talking about everything we had learned in high school and how we could teach others about it and how we could affect people in the way that Julia was affected by me. We sat up in Colby's room one day going back and forth on how to do it. And Colby said, let's grow an audience on social media. I almost didn't believe him. I didn't want to. Then he showed me all these people that have an audience that aren't doing anything good with it. And I said, all right. So the next day we started social media. We tried our very best to climb to the top as fast as possible because we knew we didn't have that much time. Through videos and collaborations with anyone we could possibly think of, we actually started getting a following. So our parents set a bar. They said, if you can make $20,000 before you graduate, then you guys can move out to Los Angeles to pursue social media as a career. So we worked. Every day, the second we finished school, we would be filming and reaching out to others, emailing social media managers and so on. We finally got our mark and took the three day drive out to LA. From there, we finally made our dream happen. We teach people confidence through our stories and through our website, The Life Project. This is the first of many things I wanna do with my life, but for now, this is where I stand. And that's where I'm gonna leave this story. Maybe in the future I'll update you, but that's basically Sam in a nutshell. And if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and comment a new video idea for next week below. Also, since YouTube doesn't show videos to subscribers anymore, I don't know why, in order to view my videos, you need to click the notification bell right now. It's right next to the subscribe button, so do that if you ever want to see any of my videos again. Either way, I'll see you guys next time.